All right, so good, good morning once again. Welcome to 30th of April, Friday, for the Ignite Mind session where we have motivational talk from people all around the world. If you are interested to host the Ignite Mind or present something, please feel free to get in touch with the Tulsi Ma'am or Abu for Dubai and for Deepa and Sunilji in India. So the person next we are hosting, the one thing which is a very important uh, characteristic of this person is her charismatic smile. It is something which cannot be hidden, even if she makes an effort. I'm sure about that. That is what her vibe is when I talk to her. And that is what she spreads across the Indian community. She has met so many people. I know that she has shared pictures where she goes and visits uh, the other kids kids in the platform. So she is a trainer by profession. She's got international diploma in teaching and learning. She has a fabulous and flawless English language. No wonder she's TESOL and TFL certified. So with a uh, further ado, with a round of applause, let's welcome the speaker for this morning. Geeta ma'am, good morning and good morning. Over to you, over to you. Good morning, good morning all dear ones here on this live platform. It's so wonderful to see you all, frankly speaking. It gives me immense pleasure to be doing my first Ignite Minds. And uh, you know, when it is a family, you want to share whatever you have. Isn't that true? So if I have a little bit of knowledge on something, why not share it and you know, take it forward? So that's exactly what I want you to learn from me a little bit, you know, whatever I know. So to start with, uh, looks like a very complicated topic. I'm very sure multiple intelligence. Oh my God. Why Gita ma'am? Why? Why this color very, color very D? Correct? No, it is not that. It is just that, you know, let's enjoy and see where we are, what we can do and how do we take this forward. This is a beautiful topic. Frankly speaking, when I got introduced to it around eight to 10 years back, I also thought, oh, yo, Venma, is it? Is it necessary? But then, you know, when you start using it on a daily basis, you realize there is so much to it, you know, and you're so connected with people because of that. And when you take it forward, see, my basic thing, I'll be very frank, you know, I love kids. I just love kids. And it just comes from my heart, you know. They say that, uh, you know, generally the animals and kids, they behave in a very similar fashion. And for me, that's the truth. So I love animals and I love kids. And uh, when I got connected to this platform, it was not because of animals or because of kids, but I saw this forum had compassion. Compassion, which doesn't come naturally to people. So if everyone is connected in a particular forum for approximately a year, it has to be because of something. And for me, that because was this compassion, kindness, forgiveness, gratitude, you name it. Everything that one should have as an inbuilt character is available in this complete forum and everyone is using it. So imagine when we move out of this platform, that's a Zoom room into the real world. What kind of energy are we oozing? We are actually oozing a very, very positive energy. So with that gratitude in our hearts, I would like to take you through the simple, but very, very exciting topic of multiple intelligence. I would want everyone to come on the video so that I can see your smiles and you can share the energy with me like Bhatia sir is doing, Abu Bekar is doing, Ruben is doing, Prashanti. Thank you, Vikasji, Somaji, thank you, Tiger. Okay, Vinodji, Simon, Shankar. Oh, wow, I see those lovely smiles. I see those lovely smiles and that's exactly what motivates me to, you know, do this. Major VV Narayanan, sir, maaf kar dena, kahin galti ho gai to. Left, right, mat karwa dena. 
no patti parade and all those okay <laughs> so let's start so see now let's look at uh, you know we will not make it a very um, presentation presentation kinds okay let's just make it a very simple way let's do it and see how it has been it can be practiced i want you to think of yourself now that you know you all have meditated and you all actually kind of you know you have opened your heart to yourself think of yourself if it was not this corporate world if it was not what you're doing currently running after targets or you know taking care of things you know family cooking you know so many things so many things what would you have wanted to do what would you wanted you know for your life just think take 2 minutes just take 2 minutes think of it unmute yourself you're all grown ups you can all maintain silence when it is needed unmute yourself let's have a session let's have an interactive session think 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 yes have you thought think 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 not thunk 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 think 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 thought 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 okay so now that you've ta- thought about what you would have wanted to be let's try to disclose it or let's write it down wherever you are i'm sure you all have a pen and a pencil so why don't we just write it down and i would want someone to at least share in the chat room what they would have preferred to be it will be very interesting if vikas ji was not a doctor or he was not helping us to meditate what would he be bhatia sir what would you have been prashanti murgeshan abu bekar okay let's start with abu bekar tell me what you would have wanted to be abu bekar don't tell me you wanted to be a hero in a movie okay you look like one that's a different story <laughs> please unmute yourself and tell me what you have written for yourself i want to be a scientist from empowerment talks oh okay uh, who's that okay dr vikas i am what i wanted to be and improving awesome traveler mountaineer photographer so much sajeevan yes human possibilities excellent excellent yes anyone else anyone else Okay, okay. Please come out. Otherwise, I'll have to call out the names. Murgeshan sir, what do what would you want to be? First of all, I want to know what does what does this ER mean? I know I'm not a very, uh, you know, outside person. So if you could just tell us what does that ER mean? ERP Murgeshan. You are on mute, sir. You are on mute. Yes, sir. Now, now start. Uh- ER means engineer. <laughs> oh, engineer. All right. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe it was like you know we have this father, FR sister, SR brother, BR. <laughs> so doctor, I thought doctor, something. Doctor, no. Mm. Uh, yes, sir. What what would you have want to be, sir? I want to be a saint, sir. A saint and soldier together. And I saint do. And- I want to be a saint and soldier, and you know, fighting against the evil in the society, and also be a saintly person. Have a ah, so sweet. Actually, Guru Nanak Ji ki kripa re. Yeah, that's there. what. You... That's what because I follow the system and uh, exactly. I've been, uh, and When basically, I... profe- professional wise, I am an engineer. Okay, and say me. You can see that as I, you know, as I feel sure that the Guru Nanak Ji ki kripa will be on our side. You know, will be on our side. Yes, sir. And yes. Murgeshan, sir. Ah, uh, sir. Oh, uh, uh, but during this lockdown period, I nearly I uh, attended two uh, thousand seminars, either uh, webinars, huh. things webinars. I am sharing this knowledge to the people. Now I have to consolidate a uh, group wise. Awesome. Um, uh, nearly forty, forty, fifty pens I used for writing my notes. Uh, <laughs> fabulous. So basically, you want to interact with people. I Now, want to help. Well, yeah awesome awesome so that's exactly see everyone has a unique very very unique character am i right so you all agree everyone has a unique character and we all share very very different things i would now like to share a small screen with you i hope you all can see it i'm sure you can 
so this is you know this is called multiple intelligence and it was dr howard gardner who actually conceptualized the whole thing now dr howard gardner you know when he started this you know you know what he said he said i'm 100% convinced that if i were to come back to earth after 50 years people would laugh at me at the idea of a uniform education you know in very simple words i always say you know there is always something you know which is a definition but in very simple words everyone is unique so everyone learns in their own ways so the next thing is everyone has to be taught in their own ways and that's what was his concept and thinking he's graduated from the harvard school and he feels that every individual is intelligent and he also feels that you know if a child is taught or taught through his preferred intelligence he will learn better so you instruct the child looking at his intelligence i'm sure all of we all of us have kids at home it can be grandchildren it can be children and it can be neighbors like now motivation sir was saying he is going to wanting to develop this into a different forum for training so that's exactly what it is everyone has to learn differently so he perceived eight different eight different intelligence but before that when i was a kid when i was a kid okay when you were kids you know who was supposed to be intelligent in your class can you tell me shankar sir who was supposed to be intelligent in your class jo first aata hai you can unmute yourself yes sir certainly not me okay that was not you jo first aata hai ha huh? <laughs> no even i certainly not me the most intelligent person in my class <laughs> <laughs> very true very true prashanti who was supposed to be the most intelligent person in your class unfortunately me because i <laughs> <laughs> look at that excellent and why were you supposed to be considered to be intelligent prashanti yeah because i always stood first okay and in what uh, in so you were very you were excelling in academics basically right right excellent and shiva shiva ma'am tell me who what was the criteria for intelligence in your class you're on mute you're on mute you're still on mute ma'am can the host please uh, unmute everyone they can put themselves yes, yes. on mute yes done done thank you abu bakar yes you can you can unmute yeah yeah good morning no one no one yeah. analyzed no one fortunately no one <laughs> yeah yes. fortunately i am the a uh, brilliant as well as the intelligent child in my in my class <laughs> as well as in the college and throughout I don't know what happened to the others. <laughs> and I don't. I don't believe in intellectual, but I hard working. That space me. Hard okay. work. That space. Yeah. yeah. See, there's a difference between intellectual and coming first in the class. Uh, Prashanti, yeah. b- yes, bank backbenchers are real intelligent. So Abu Bakar, you are the most intelligent person. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, but yes, sir. Tell us. See, it is not only coming first in the class. throwing challenge to others to come forward to become first in the class in my uh, class uh, this one i threw the challenge that okay uh, let anybody come forward and beat me okay so i used to empower them also give my notes and other things also and i always used to raise my hand even before the um, teacher asked the questions <laughs> what is uh, what is going to go wrong if my answer is not going to be correct correct so very true that is a way i used to put it See, and he's an engineer. He's an yeah. engineer, so he has to yeah. be good at math. <laughs> yeah, very true, isn't yeah. it? So it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You have been so looking many... for calculating on that. Okay, so the challenge and let them come forward and yeah. take lessons from here and give a befitting with life. 
Excellent, excellent. Yes. So that's exactly what used to happen, you know, when we were children, you know, anyone who was very good at math and anyone who was very good at language was considered to be very, very intelligent because, you know, they could understand everything and they could be academically, they could excel because first of all, they understood the language very well. So they would understand what the teacher was saying because the teacher will come and listening, 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 listening. Rote learning. The teacher would just go on. There was nothing. She was just there to actually share her knowledge. But learning happened. It was up to the children. If they learned, okay. So that's the reason what happened was when a child was academically doing excelling, it was only because of two things. He was able to understand the language. So he was a linguistic child and he would excel. And the second thing was that, you know, oh, maths may, my God, is 100 out of 100 at maths may. Yeah. You know, Ekdam, he is very intelligent and he's very good. Are, he solves the problems like that. His trigonometry is so, so good. His, um, uh, like, you know, geometry is so good. Integration is fabulous. Ah, you asked me, oh my God, my 11th was so horrid, you know, because I was supposed to be very intelligent till 10th. And suddenly when this integration and calculation came, I was like, it was just going overhead. It was just going, all the walls were breaking around me. And uh, my friends used to tell me, Gita, you were the topper in 10th. Now what happened to you in 11th? I said, no, everything the backbenchers are taking. <laughs> so I'm not able to manage it. So that's exactly what was the criteria for intelligence. But was it the right criteria? How many of you think that, you know, that should be the criteria? Actually, we still believe in that, you know. That's the reason, you know, we get so much. We get so much importance through the scores. Are he got 98.7% in 12. He got 96% in 12. You know, he got uh, 100 in uh, math. He got uh, 100 in science. So that's exactly what happens even now. Although there is so much learning and there's so much work on how people are differently intelligent. And that's exactly what Dr. Howard Gardner wanted us to realize and change the learning skills and change this concept of intelligence. Let's see, what do you say about them? Are they intelligent or are they not? Just type yes or no in the chat box. So shall we start some, I'll just pull out some names. A.R. Rahman, is he intelligent? Just chat, type in your chat box. Yes, Sakshi says yes, Saurav says yes. Major says no, genius, someone says. Shankar says yes. Somaji says yes. Great. Okay. So there was one no and majorly yes. Abu Bekar says no. Shankar Sachin. Okay. Shiba says yes. Excellent. So I think on human this thing, how many saw logo say pucha? Usme say 90 people said yes. So we will go with yes that yes, A.R. Rahman is intelligent. Okay. Let's take a look at the next name because it was there. So I'm asking you, what about a Sachin Tendulkar? Is he intelligent? Yes, Saurav says yes, big yes, Sakshi, Somaji, yes. Anyone else? Yes, Prashanti, Shiba. Excellent. Yes, Major Sir again says no. Shamshad ma'am, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Again, we have a only major says no. Rest everyone says yes. We will definitely come back to major sir to explain us. Yes, in his field. Shiba says yes, in his field. Now look at, our, look at our politicians. Look at our politicians. Are they supposed to be intelligent? Are they supposed to be intelligent? Like he says, Rajni Khan, yes. You have to tell me, are the politicians intelligent? Yes, Abu Bekar says yes. Yes, Shankarji says yes. Yeah, the whole of India has 
voted for them. So there has to be some caliber, some intelligence. Giri says no. <laughs> We can agree to that, but what to do? They are okay. Chiba says yes again. Again, when we ask hundred people, almost ninety people are saying yes. Now, you know what? When it comes to intelligence, what is intelligence? What is intelligence? If someone is able to create something which is beneficial for our society, do you agree? Anyone who does anything, I mean, even I can create something. Like today, I have maybe done a, a my job. I'm doing a job. Proficiency in any field. So when a person is able to use his or her intellect, so that there is some benefit to the society, that's exactly what is intelligence. Let's look at our farmers. What about the farmers? Do you think they are intelligent? Do you think our farmers are intelligent? I would really like to know that. Yes. No, they they may not be basically intelligent, but they have the skill set to produce something which is useful. So they are in that their specific domain. They you can call them you know really skill uh, skilled one, uh, or you may say that it's intelligence. They are using it only for that. Perfect. Perfect, Bhatia sir. Perfect. You know, yeah. they have certain skill sets huh. which can be used and which is used. Yes. So that they become extremely good farmers and they are able to produce. Right? Now, that's exactly what we are going to look at. So now we have come to a conclusion that, okay, may, that, you know, Maybe uh, like Major Narayan feels, no, 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 these are people are not intelligent. I'm perfectly He's fine. May, he that. may be meaning that only. Uh, basically not intelligent. In that category we will be that discussing. Category. Otherwise, otherwise he's skilled. Absolutely. So yeah. I will share a small screen with you in which our Dr. Howard Garner actually told us what are the different types of intelligence that a person mm -hmm. can have. So these were the eight types of intelligence that a person could have. The first was the linguistic intelligence. Linguistic intelligence is nothing but when a person is able to learn languages, speak well, narrate well, write well. It's a very, very simple way of looking at things. He was very clear that Everyone, every child, every human is unique and they are born with certain intelligence and these are the different types of intelligence. Then he spoke about the visual and spatial intelligence. Person who love to draw, who are creative by nature, who love colors. Spatial, they have a concept of space. They'll be able to create things in that particular space. When they look at something, they'll be able to recreate that. Your cinematographers are a great example of this. Then there are people who have interpersonal skills. What is interpersonal? Between people. Between people. People who work in teams, who are very social. So that's called your interpersonal intelligence. Then there are people who are connected to nature and are natural and, and perform things love nature and do things which is connected to nature. That's called the naturalist intelligence. And then we have people who have musical intelligence. Yes, like I said, academically, you know, people who do very well, have a logical thinking, have a mathematical bent of mind, they're called logical and mathematical intelligence. And then there are people who are bodily kinesthetic now what is that that is basically when someone uses their body gestures their whole body that's called bodily kinesthetic intelligence a person like your pt usha a sachin tendulkar yamini krishnamurti all your dancers birju maharaj these are all people with bodily kinesthetic intelligence and then there are people with intrapersonal 
intelligence. What's intrapersonal? Which comes from inside you. So these are the different eight types of intelligence. I'll just quickly take you through these intelligence so that you will understand a little better. So this is what you call your academic intelligence, which is your linguistic intelligence when you are sensitive to meaning, sounds, rhythms of the words, and especially like storytelling and creative writing. So I've given a few suggestions if you want, if you are a parent or a grandparent, you have children at home, what you should do so that the children love this. And that's, you can give them activities such as dialogue writing, saying, creating things, you know, more of talking, reading books, listening to a lot of things and like, you know, give them a newspaper, ask them to find out things in the newspaper. Such activities will help the child to increase his linguistic intelligence. And if some child is not possessing linguistic intelligence, if you give these activities, the child will improve on his linguistic intelligence. Next comes your mathematical and logical in, in intelligence. So these people are sensitive to order, sequence, you know, you give them Sudoku puzzles, you give them puzzles, basically, and they will be able to enjoy that. They like problem solving. You give them any problem, they would want to solve it. They will want to try to create solutions for a problem. They will try to create a pattern. They will like to do experiments, more of experiential people. And the suggestions are you can use organizers showing relationship within two different things, your big, small, all those things, computer instructions, etc. So these are the suggestions for the parents. If it's clear, we'll just move on to a little bit more, which is interpersonal and intrapersonal. Interpersonal are people who are sensitive to leadership opportunities. They will be street smart. You will be, they'll be having a lot of emotional feelings. They like to help others. Like Bhatia Sa was saying, they like to do tutoring, <coughs> working in a team. So these are the suggestions for the parents. Ask these kind of children to work in teams and ask them to discuss, ask them to do things, you know, give half of the things to someone, some other half to let them collaborate and do work. Then comes your intrapersonal intelligence. You're very, very sensitive to their own feelings. <clears throat> All they need is personal motivation and nothing more than that. When they are sure of the topic, then they will open their mouth. Otherwise, they will never, ever open their mouth. These will be the children who will be extremely quiet at home. They'll sit in their room, sit in a corner, do their own work. They only need their own motivation. They work alone. So the suggestion for the parents is give them a quiet place. Let them do things independently. Let them practice journaling. It really, really helps. Once in a while, if the child is very young, go through the journals. We'll see what is happening in his mind so that you will know the child much better. So we go to the next one and the next four are our intelligence, which are very, very sensitive to art, culture, society, etc. Like your visual intelligence, they are very, very, like I was telling you earlier also, they love to draw, they love colors, they love space. So the suggestions are using mind mapping, colors, manipulating all the colors, giving them blocks, etc., with different, different shapes, sizes, they will be able to enjoy better and learn better. Musical intelligence, they're sensitive to singing, playing instruments, drumming. These are the children, you know, you give them anything, they will start drumming. You give them a table, they will start drumming. You give them a plate, they will start drumming. So they love that, you know, they love the sound, they love the noise. So these are the different suggestions for the parents. You have to modulate your voice when you're speaking to such children. Let them learn through music. You know, you can ask them to put on music and learn. They will like, you know, they generally like to sit in a place which is more crowded and has got sound around it. It's a surrounding sound and they love to possibly learn better in that surrounding sound. 
and then the bodily kinesthetic people who love dancing who love sports who will not sit anywhere quietly they'll be all across the place and those are the kids you know with whom we really love because we know that you know they're all across the place and they are they are more seen than being quiet they are heard seen everything so these are the suggestions to give them activities use of textures etc so that children enjoy learning last but not the least are the naturalist intelligence people who are connected to nature they love animals they love playing in the mud they love beautiful birds trees planting everything they love so they love to be a part with the nature so these are the different eight types of intelligence that dr howard gardner had proposed there's work going on called existential intelligence why i exist in the world but the theory is just rolling out we are still not sure of it so that will be the ninth one so the different eight types of intelligence now i want you to look at this intelligence for 2 minute and see which criteria you fall under now this is all eight are nature uh, given by the nature the man made is one the artificial intelligence <laughs> <laughs> we, have been, we have been teaching machine to yeah. behave like us now they are going to teach us how how we should how behave. to do work how to do how work, to do work. <laughs> how to behave now uh, absolutely so please look at the slide and now i would want you to type in the chat box what you think is your intelligence <laughs> music and dance pallavi dance and fun giri yes anyone else what's your intelligence somaji has already said you know nature he wants yes. to be connected to nature bhatia sahab has already said intrapersonal he wants to be a saintly person intrapersonal and interpersonal interpersonal also see that inter internal has to come outside <laughs> if you can you cannot be the peace and harmony within you you cannot be with that yeah so that has to get generated from within major narayan has to be an interpersonal person after all he is you know managing so many people hats off sir thank you so much <laughs> more than one yes you can have you know there are people who have one or two intelligence also but you cannot have all the intelligence that would be too much for anyone to handle you know but yes more than one or two is definitely possible see now let's look at a teacher let's look at a teacher as per se she might be good at math she might be good at languages she will also be a very she will be very good at drawing and she will also have a great interpersonal skill because she has to talk to the children she has to be presentable in front of the parents management principal the staff everyone so that that is how we develop our intelligence also so basic intelligence when you are born is always there and then you start developing your intelligence also because of the societal needs so everyone you so when you look at it everyone has one or two types of intelligence thank you everyone for uh, writing down all the intelligence prashanti says logical linguistic and intrapersonal absolutely perfect because she was a great um, academician and she speaks very well also very well in fact and she's so uh, she's you are able to communicate with her you know and then she is intrapersonal she is reserved so excellent so people do have such two to three types of intelligence as well so now let's look at one more thing uh, parents it it's a thought we when we are talking about one or two intelligence for ourselves what is our expectation from our children uh what i feel is that uh, we should watch them and see which they have that can be treated as their verticals and try to give them certain side loops also which are needed okay. for their good life ahead so that vision we should have and try to develop those which are not existing and try to support what vertical already is existing. awesome awesome very true very true actually what he says makes 
absolute sense because our expectation as a mother might be the child has to be a dancer or singer or if i was a, a throw ball player he has to be a throw ball player or a athlete athlete the, he has to be an engineer he has to learn swimming uh, he has to do abacus he has to be perfect in english and he has to be very good in maths what are we trying to do to our child you know we are trying to pull the child from all ends no we are going to confuse the child perfect you are not only confusing you are changing the total learning skills of the child and your expectations are not matching you are expecting the child is not expecting to learn swimming the child is not expecting to learn music the child is not expecting to learn art forms see what the child is good at today today if sachin tendulkar was not playing cricket and he was not motivated to become a cricketer will any one of us in this platform we are 35 of us if he was a doctor would he would we have known that there is a sachin tendulkar existing on this earth definitely definitely correct. not definitely. because we should understand one thing very clearly the professionalism lies in every field that's what basically it is so allow them support them empower them. make them child prodigies and let them let them learn what they want to learn give them a chance to learn i know it's a very small forum but i really felt this was a forum where i wanted to put forward that let's not pressure our children to do things which they don't want to do this is a forum which believes in humanity this is the forum which believes that you know children are children this is the forum which believes that kindness mankind everything is possible so let us not put pressure on our children to become super humans someone has written children are not consistent you know why they are not consistent because we are confusing them we are changing their basic nature we are changing their basic nature because of our expectations and they change their nature after some time depending upon their peers initially they are in your control once they go out of your control then comes their peers so they change according to them and then the society changes them once they move out and become go for work today in the last one and a half years of being in a lockdown we have realized a lot of things many people have gone back to their art many people have started drawing many people have started singing many people have become more creative i have started doing a lot of you know sudoku i have started loving it many many of them have gone back and have started doing things which they enjoy so what had happened was they wanted to become something they became something but today they want to come back to what they wanted in their life and that is very simple remember humanity humans we need very little to be happy and that happiness comes only when we are responsible for ourselves let your child be responsible for himself let him be responsible for himself let him learn that this is how if he learns he is going to be a great performer encourage him and i'll give you a very simple example if you have a child who is hyperactive who is bodily kinesthetic ask him to go do 1 km run or 2 km run in a morn in the morning ask him to come back give him breakfast and ask him to sit for his classes you see he will perform better i can assure you buy colors to the child who is a creative child give him one one hour slot tell that you have to draw you have to be creative in this one hour your classes or not i want to see some creation every day and see how the child performs academically and that's a proven fact it's a proven fact you give the you ask the child to go for 
anything that he loves. Go play in the mud, enjoy, bring the leaves, bring the flowers, play with animals, play with dogs, and come back and see how he performs. And that's the beauty of multiple intelligence. So just, I think we have finished everything. My final, I think eight types, if you all have noted, extremely good. So this is what it is. And the learning, the suggestions for parents and caregivers. So interpersonal, intrapersonal, visual, musical, bodily kinesthetic, naturalist. Now I would want to un you to understand, if anyone can tell me, which intelligence is this? What type of intelligence is this? Kinesthetic. Excellent. Excellent, Shweta. What is this? Music. Musical. Music. Musical. Yeah. What about no. this little boy? Logical. Math. Math. Mathematical yes. logic. Yes. Excellent. What about this girl reading the book? Linguistic. Excellent. Linguistic. What about this little girl doing internal, meditation? Internal. Internal. Intra, intrapersonal. Intrapersonal. Intra what about these people in nature? Naturalist. Excellent. What about this children playing together? Interpersonal. 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 What about these using the colors and um, scissors and you know creating things logic visual, visual. Visual. visual intelligence or spatial intelligence so all, all students 100 percent mark <laughs> all students are exactly because everyone has their own intelligence and i think somewhere uh, our systems are changing slowly I've been talking about this for almost 10 years and, and, and many 200 marks out of 100 for me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I end this uh, small session, which I really want to review people. Please let the child live a happy life. That's more important than anything else is how I have always been looking at things and, and they will actually, they are more responsible than what we think they are. Give them responsibilities, they become resilient. Yeah. And that's for sure. So, yes, I would uh, like some feedbacks and maybe a question on the session. Yeah. And yes, Bhatia sir. And so much. Yeah. So yes. One thing you said in the beginning, it is a complex edition, but you made it very simple. I think you are taking an orthogonal component. That's one thing. Second thing is that, you know, when people say that you are not responsible. The natural question comes to me, it, it really happened in my professional life. When the boss was teaching that year, I don't have a second level of leadership. I, I said, have you given a platform to develop it? Have you tried to recognize that it, it, it exists? Very true. So that we are there. And unless you create a second level of the leadership, you are not a leader. Perfect, perfect, yes. perfect. So that's why even for the teachers or the, for the parents, they need to be empowering parents this one rather than trying to dictate what they think right. Give them responsibilities, see yes, how they perform and hold their hand. Then, then guide them and help them wherever it is. Then go for guided learning like yeah. they say. No? Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you so much, Bhatia, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, Somaji. Yes, you really cannot be imposed. Until you don't impose it, automatically they will become superior. Yes. Wonderful, Gita Ji. Amazing. See, uh, recently I attended one international speaker from the Toastmaster, Sara Khan. Okay. Wonderful champion speaker. She said, in a talk, the person who is speaking should have a message, a key message to offer to the audience. And the person must be able to really translate that message fully into the people. That's also a teacher's quality. You have a message you have a solution, you have an idea, you want transformation in the parents, you have tips to the students. And as a teacher, that's what I said, 100 out of 100, all students scoring 100 marks. That is the success you have shown in the last slide. Everyone was able to answer. At least, yeah. at least 
dissertation paper. And all of us also found out what kind of intelligence in uh, is there in me. For example, for me, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and natural. So that's how my style actually I've naturally blended with the nature. Amazing presentation. And you started the most beautiful thing was you started with the talking, asking people, hey, Rahman, Sachin Tendulkar, like that, like that. And you brought that educative slide in between, like a nice sandwich, you know, the beautifully stuffed softly on both sides. An amazing presentation, natural. Yeah. No doubt that 10 years it is an obsession. So it is your subject coming from the bottom of your heart. We loved it. This is one of the best uh, Ignite Mind session, I can say. Thank you very That's much. That's really ignited. Thank you so much. So much in the it's way it's... you actually praise, you know, you feel, oh my God, I'm floating. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gita Ji, it is not praise. It is not praise. So much you do not believe in praises. He has no, only no, appreciated. No, no. That is our duty to do it. Appreciation has to be done. <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate. Thank it is appreciation, so not the praising. Praising is always where you lack something and you just enlarge it. You, do, you get that key message the talk should be authentic it should come from the heart and you must be able to translate it and there should be a message here you had uh, no, not one message three or four five message all messages are translated people are able to relate it and this is coming from your heart Authentic, authenticity no faking authenticity cannot be faked and that is the speech Thank you, sir. No, Thank you. That's what I mean. Sincere. Yes. Question time. Yes, Major, sir. Uh, Geetha, madam, is there, are there any other uh, intelligences other than this eight? Because uh, I had read somewhere. Yeah, I said that. Existence. Extra, extra existen no, it's existential intelligence. Okay. Yeah. Because I read there, somewhere, yes, extrapolative or existential intelligence. Absolutely. So they're still working on it, sir, and uh, it should be, uh, be, it's basically, you know, uh, there are a lot of people who, uh, you know, get this feeling why I am here, you know, that question. So why I exist? And that's a, that's going to be a very beautiful intelligence. They're still working on it. And uh, it was, it, there was a paper which is being submitted and they'll be talking about it very soon. Because I consider that education is a lifelong experience. And Absolutely. experience is a lifelong education. Absolutely. When you combine this education and experience, then you get what is called wisdom or expertise. Perfect. How nice. How nice. How well put. How well put. A learning Excellent a presentation, teacher, man. Thank you so much. A teacher is the one who learns continuously. The day you stop learning, you will no longer be a teacher. That's and the universe never have... stops teaching. And we should never stop learning, they say. And yes. today's session, we've been able to learn quite a lot. Thank Thanks for the sir. excellent presentation and for the creative uh, PPT. A lot of uh, colors, different personalities that has added flavor to the presentation. All the very best, man. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, Simon. Yeah. Uh, it was a very lucid presentation. Now, my question is, who is more responsible for resisting change? Educated people or illiterate people? I, from my, uh, if you have to look at my perspective, when I go for any trainings to school, you know, till the first tea break, my teachers will be sitting like this. I know everything. Who are yes. you to tell me? I've been teaching for the past 25 years. I don't know why manager. Ah, management. She is yeah. going to come and tell us something. Okay. And <laughs> after the first tea break, then the teachers kind of, you know, ma'am, uh, this looks a little interesting. Uh, maybe we can learn a little. And on the second day, they become my friends. So I'll think, I, I look at it, um, Simon, like this, you know. You know, when a person is educated, he already is open to learning. You know, somewhere we actually kind of stop learning because we think that we have learned everything. That is where things stop. 
But once we trigger their learning, I'll give you a very simple example, Simon, because I work with the teachers. The only system in this whole world which had to learn continuously was the teaching profession. It could not stop. They had never done a live Zoom class in their whole life. They were classroom teachers. They were classroom teachers. They were interacting with students. They were visually seeing them. They were talking to them. They were feeling them. Starting right from how to adapt to the new platform to how to take the learning on this new platform and ensuring that the children are learning all happened in this one year, not even one year, three months, two months. So we discovered during this pandemic that if you are educated, you are ready to learn, provided there is something which triggers you to learn. Uneducated people, it is, we're not talking about illiterate or anything. I don't know what is illiteracy. I'll be very frank because I really feel that, you know, everyone is literate in their own terms. You go to anyone, you know, the smallest of the small person in the remotest of the remote village, he knows how to live smartly. He knows how to live. So if he also has some reason for learning, he will definitely learn. But that learning has to be triggered. There has to be some reason that a person wants to learn. And that is, I think, the most important thing. So it is basically, I have always felt, maybe it can be a job. What motivates you to learn is very important. So if you want a person to learn, you should find his or her motivation. If you have found out that, you will ensure that the person learns. I hope I answer your question. I would like to add one small thing in this. Yes, there is a big difference between the educated and the learned. Yeah, true. Man has to be really a learned, learned person. And for that, the education may be only a tool. True. Not always you are the one who is educated is a learned. And not all the learned people need to be educated. Because we can see the history of the mankind. The most of our good leaders who are really led the were in a different uh, aspect of the human life, they are more learned rather than a formal Educate. education. Very because true. education, I mean, a learning is not confined to the four walls of the classroom. That true. comes with the, when you have the education, the experience, and your own uh, motivation and other things built in that, you become learned. And the, the zeal to learn is something very important. And, and uh, anything can be learned. And once you are ready to learn anything, I automatically, the skill set that developed and this uh, so called intelligence also automatically pour in it. Yes. Um, true that. True. Yeah. Yes, Vikas Ji, you've raised your hand. Uh, yeah, Gita Ji, it was a wonderful presentation and uh, it has, uh, like, this is the question time. So I wanted to ask you one thing Are there any instruments or tools available to find out in children how to identify which type of intelligence they are? so that the parents can be helped in grooming that area of the child. Because most of the children or most of the parents, what they're doing, they know that there are various types of intelligence, let's say. So what they do is they expose their child to various things in the early part of the age. As we had discussed, it's not confusing. We don't confuse children, but there is a exposure to various things, the music, the sports, the so, so many things are there. So that soon after, let's say two, three years later, the child is able to zero down to those areas which interest that person, the child. So now, but in the process, what happens? Some important time is lost. Yeah. And there are moments when, or there are people or there are cases where, yes, they do get confused also because they start thinking that this is what I like because the teacher was good. True. So is there yeah, a way of psychological tools or assessing yes beforehand yeah. if there are can you share the pdf and or something let's say have another session okay on this. uh in fact um, i i was doing a lot of research on this as well and i came to know you know there is something called the fingerprints you know they take their fingerprints and then they find out you know and and that's uh, supposed to be almost 98 percent accurate in fact, they, oh, so they are going that. back to palmistry. <laughs> no, it is not palmistry. You know, the loops that we have on fingers. Yeah, that's part are, of palmistry. 
yeah. are very different right. yeah and uh, they have a data you know it is actually artificial uh, le- um, intelligence so they have a data bank and they uh, put it in the data bank and that is how the result gets generated so yeah. then they have a whole lot of 32 pages report that they talked about not only this intelligence they talk about the emotional quotient the intel you know eq iq uh, critical quotient everything they talk about that also and uh, there are lot of things you know and then there are psychometric tests which help you to do that but still uh, they are not any concrete thing which i would suggest that okay we can do it basically like you said you know what i suggest to my teachers or my parents you know when i do the parenting is when the child is very small when he is not touched by all of our uh, you know uh, pressures and you know what we are trying to tell the child to do give certain things to the child like expose him to you know okay. i'll give you a very simple example suppose That's i give what a, most the parents do yeah. yeah so i suppose i just give blocks to a group of 10 students i give them different different colors and different different sizes blocks there will be people who will be throwing those blocks there will be children who will be actually putting the blocks properly there will be children who will be trying to create through those blocks there will be trying there will be children who will be taking the blocks from other children and putting it together and trying to make things you know these are simple simple techniques in which you can ask there will be children who will be counting the number of uh, or putting them together different shapes different sizes this actually if you observe carefully you'll be able to find out another simple thing that you can do is give them a lot of chalks different color chalks big small broken chalks see what the child is doing with those things a group of 10 children some might be just banging the chalk some might be hitting the other child some might be putting them together different colors different shapes so different colors would mean that they're more on the creative the visual learning they are counting they are counting so that means it will be different so all this are different different methods which are simple methods not expensive but yes there are expensive tools like you are saying vikas ji you were asking there are expensive tools and i have really come across these exp- in fact i have taken it myself i'll be very frank to understand how it works maybe one of these days i can share it with you personally because it gives you a lot of things you know which everyone should not know Absolutely. so that is how these tools are working so there are tools which is available in the market so i hope i answered your question in whatever possible way yeah a lot of research is going on in dermatoglyphics yes. as they call it now yes dermatoglyphics And- I don't yeah, want to name it like palmistry that. earlier so it's like they are coming with a new name uh people i have in my childhood found that people used to take fingerprints the palmists used to take fingerprints and find out your uh, innate qualities and also predict your future the second thing which i wanted to bring to the table or to the platform for everybody to think about is see when we look at it from the point of view of the person who's receiving end at the receiving end let's say i am a patient i am a general person a non medical person and i want to get my headache checked or let's say i have some pain somewhere now do i go to a cardiologist do i go to a neurosurgeon or a neurologist or a psychologist or a general physician or a surgeon now the problem with these specific you know specializations have come to this world to such an extent that now there are people who will be you know taking care of only the retina only the i mean they are needed i am not saying they are not necessary but when we come to a point where i have to actually address to the whole body the health of the whole body it is a generalist which is better than the super specialist super Absolutely. super super specialist mm-hmm. like one person will do only the root canal treatment like what at least you address to my tooth problem first no yes so there is a there is another aspect to this when it comes to bringing up children do we initially make a generalist or identify that quality very early in life and make him very you know smart only in that and you know sort of making him 
very isolated tubular vision person so there is a big uh, challenge here true um see uh, when we talk about multiple intelligence like i said some children might not have a particular intelligence so we can help them to get the other intelligence by using different different tools like i was suggesting so that's also one way of ensuring that you know but what the um, whole thing suggests is that you know let the child learn the way the child wants to learn and you can develop that we all have done that we all have all kinds of intelligence we are able to talk to people we are good in uh, and don't we count when you go to the market we count and we you know give them money to the vendor we do that so a little bit of maths is needed little bit of everything is needed if we, if you ask me to draw a um, uh, ant i might draw a horse because that's how creative i am when it comes to drawing so but you ask me to uh, do a uh, like you know a song i might be able to sing so there are few things we can always add on for our child's benefit so let's go to giri ji who's raised his hand and or pallavi yeah pallavi tell us <laughs> gita ma good morning to all of you gita ma we guess still let me say one thing about from my own experience we have one son also now he is he completed his uh, plus 2 uh, when he, he was a little child uh, always his the teachers complained that he is not concentrating in his studies so i uh, we are uh, we were observing him and uh, observing and observing we got that he has some more kinetic thetic energy than um, the intellect intelligence intelligence so uh, and uh, always he was uh, uh, doing with his um, toys and uh, he never spoils it but always observing and doing with uh, something with his toys and uh, he showed interest in uh, dancing and singing but uh, at last we uh, got that he is very much interested in electrical uh, wiring and oh. uh, practicing that uh, last year and the year before last year he got second prize in state level and he is very interested thank you thank you he shows very interesting he is very intrapersonal not interpersonal but he is very intrapersonal now he is working in a textile as a sales boy he he never likes to uh, uh, sit idle in the home if he sit at home he always watching movies and uh, he don't like he don't do yoga like that uh, he like uh, loves <laughs> sanskrit very much but he do some uh, asana but uh, meditation like that he is not interested at all but uh, he is very intrapersonal and when we go outside he is very um, much uh, like to uh, interact with the people that's all that's really good yeah so the challenge here is like how to identify very early and then go about it i think observation is needed and we have to spend time with our children all days we have to observe them where they are going where is their talent we have to observe them thank you pallavi that was wonderful thank you dr vikas thank you so much pallavi yeah, yeah. and give us you in the shailaja we not <laughs> oh sorry yeah, yeah. Sure, thank shailaja. you shailaja yeah, yeah. sorry shailaja uh, and thank you geeta ji giri sir present yeah 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 thank you geeta ji for that wonderful topic i think it uh, really ignited the audience this morning and everyone is going back and observing the children today poor children will have lot of toys and colors and running around i think and parents will be observing them <laughs> what are they going to do so all the best to all the parents and i i feel sorry for the children So let's go and check with uh, Giri sir what he has to say, and uh, one more question after that, and then we'll be closing. Go ahead, Giri ji. Just one minute for me. Okay, sir. After yeah. Giri ji. Um, yeah, yeah. Better must telling that we're uh, using the fingerprint now. That is called a by mind is a brain mapping, and quite a bit of concern is there for that. Some of our friends are doing that activity. 
that uh, each uh, fingerprints of the all the ten fingers uh, of the children, they they will carry to that uh, company. They will give the report about the child. Maybe a ten page like the report is there. There we can see that what are the type of intelligence the parameters are there. I can share the details in our group. Thank you no. so much, Murugesh sir. Yeah, Engineer yeah. Murugesh sir, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Giri ji, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Naina ji. Taking some control during feedback. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, uh, Geeta ji, I know very well. You have started a five M club journey with walking, and then you have hosted, and you are consistent player in five M club. I know very well. Today you came with a very good uh, topic. This multiple intelligence. It's a new word, a new terminology. I am learning today. the keyword i am comparing with this uh, wheel of life everybody is doing some skill uh, for an example i am doing about water something every time i can come and speak about water the people will get bored some other day but when i am speaking some other topic definitely it will enhance my knowledge and the people also can understand something from me also like that today we i came to know that there are so many learning from you Uh, what is the intelligence? Uh, really, the multiple intelligence. As I am, you know, I can dance very well. I can hear music, and so many intelligence are with me. But I have how to exhibit to the people and make the people happy. And uh, can coming to the childrens uh, as you Geeta ma'am told about, um, uh, we should not interfere to the childrens uh, things now. one thing i want to my uh, thing is uh, they have first for 20 years they have to keep them fit first the physical earlier in our day i was born in 1970s we have to uh, ride a cycle we have to physically movement so that fitness uh, almost 47 years 48 years without any operation i moved in this journey but now the obesity these people are not at all understanding and their circadian rhythm they are not properly sleeping we are not interfering in anything at least they have to take care of their bodies physical bodies then only it can help to improve themselves uh, thank you geeta ma'am Yes. Uh, Geeta, ma'am, I would like to thank you so much. This was a uh, not a new subject for me, but uh, the way you brought it, it was so insightful. Uh, the questions were so thought-provoking. Once again, my son is thirteen years, and uh, it has uh, it's been like a revision for me. Reassess myself, how I'm treating him. Yeah, I keep observing him a lot. uh but the insights are again uh, great um uh, like yeah this awareness has to spread among the parents teachers everybody that uh, it's not only the academic intelligence but we have to look at so many other things as well as the personality types uh, like whether the child is introvert or extrovert and uh, respecting that and understanding children is so very important in this whole process loved your presentation ma'am you made a complex things so simple and enjoyable uh, love you thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much prashanti if i'm thank able you, to make any difference yes sakshi yeah good morning good morning everyone geeta ma'am lovely topic lovely presentation very interesting and um, you handled it in a very nice very awesome way it you kept us occupied and you kept us enthused throughout now i have two questions one is where do you fit in these two aspects of our personality that is somebody who is very good at social skills who is good at handling people whose emotional intelligence is high and second is whose iq is superb who has got very good memory so in this eight types of intelligence where do we fit two of these attributes okay if you look at it he is very good with people that means the kind of intelligence that the child has is an interpersonal skill 
right okay okay yeah and what was the second thing you said he is very good at memories right yeah is iq and memories high very high IQ, comparatively IQ to and the normal children so iq and memory yeah. is very high so generally for most of the academics if you look at it you need a very high iq especially when it comes to logical and mathematical skills so okay. the child you can look at the child in that kind of a platform see uh, as a teacher trainer or people uh, or a person is connected with people who can work in teams he can be a project person he can be anyone because see a uh, engineer or anyone in those terms because he's got a high uh, like you know logical mathematical skill and he can work in teams so these are the two things that a person can actually concentrate on would be a suggestion it's just a suggestion i never force people to do anything i have never done that <laughs> i don't even wake up my child can you believe it i have given the responsibility of waking up for my child when she was 5 years old you want to go to school you will have to be waking up yourself because anyway we are making sound at home so only extra sound i used to make in her room so that she knows she has to get up so that's okay, how i have all this that's oh. how i believe and ma'am yeah oh. good good thanks for that and the second question is apart from all these intelligences what you talk and talk about these eight type of intelligence i also have a view point that a person's intelligence is one aspect plus how he takes it how he learns how he absorbs that also needs to be identified because so far what i've read also throws some kind of light on on children's personality that all children are different and they learn through a different method some are good um, in learning through you know visuals some want wants to feel it kinesthetically and you know there are different types of learning so can you throw some light on that aspect is it um vast or how is it ma'am if you look at it in the slide the second slide that i had shared i very clearly mentioned that you know children learn differently so when they learn differently you have to use a right tool so that the child learns the way he wants to learn i had given some parent suggestions that these are the suggestions that you can use so that your child can learn accordingly so like suppose the child is more of a visual child ask him to learn or learn through visuals if a child is i'll give you a very simple example okay let's talk about very small child maybe around you know lkg ukg child let's talk about that now if i want to teach the child numbers 1 2 3 4 5 there's so many methods i can write down numbers correct with the numbers i can draw some pictures ask the children to count those pictures i can create a poem 1 2 buckle my shoe 3 4 shut the door right i can ask the child to jump four times two times six times correct so we are using different different intelligence for making the same we are the topic is same we are teaching the numbers but we are using different different methodology is thank you okay? sakshi for that question and yeah yeah it's clear geeta ma'am yes it was mentioned it is not only i observing observing also means how the children are learning that was the main uh, cross yes prashant thank you, you ma'am last ma question yeah ma'am could you please share your number or yeah i can share it with you prashant okay um, thank you thank you or she is a regular member of 5 am for the india club and she's been with us for okay. longer than 100 days i believe 145 plus Wow. Yes. Where do you stay, so, ma'am? Kerala. In Delhi. Oh, Kerala. Okay. All right. So, thank you so much for.